we just have to memorize probably the derivatives of these uh, inverse trig functions, or at least memorize the procedure that we use to derive them so that we can get them when we need them, So because they're pretty common. So now what happens if, if we have a function inside of an arc trigonometric function? For example, um, what if instead of having x in the arc sign, we have some function of x? I'm just going to denote it by u. So we have some function u inside there. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x of arc sine of u. You could assume that depends on x. You get the derivative of the outside, but evaluate at the inside. So you'd have u here, and then you'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Same thing here. If it was the arctangent of some function of x, let's call it u, then you'd have the derivative of the inside evaluated, the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside, and so on. If this was a u, then you'd have a u here and a u there, right? Derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside times the derivative of the inside. Now what we usually do to save space is we take that du dx, think of it as du dx over 1, and we tuck it up here in the numerator. So like here there would be, if we had the arc cosine of u, there'd be a u here. And instead of writing du dx out there, we just tuck the du dx up here in the numerator. It would save us just a little bit of space. So if we look at these um, arc trigonometric functions, their derivatives in a form that's ready for the chain rule, we can see what we get in each case is just there's a there's a function of x inside and so that replaces the the part in the derivative and then there's um, this du dx which indicates the derivative of the inside uh, written up above there. Let's work some examples where we've got that uh, chain rule. So here we have um, the derivative of the arc tangent of the natural log of x. So well we know that the derivative of the arctangent is 1 over 1 plus the variable squared, so we'll plug in our natural log of x and square it, and then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of the natural log of x with respect to x is 1 over x. So we could write that as 1 over x times 1 plus the natural log of x squared, say. Okay. Um, ah, here's another one. Take the derivative of the arc cosine. You know, the derivative of the arc cosine is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. In this case, we're going to plug in this inside function, which is e to the negative t. So we get e to the negative t squared. Then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of e to the negative t is negative e to the negative t. So if we just simplify a little bit, um, e uh, if we have negative 1 times negative e to the negative t, that gives us e to the negative t. Downstairs here, um, we have e to the negative t times itself, right? So that would be e to the, if we add exponents, e to the negative 2t. So we have 1 minus e to the negative 2t for the derivative here. Okay. Huh, there's another one. You take the derivative with respect to s of this function. Well, um, s squared minus 1 underneath the square root is the same thing as s squared minus 1 to the 1 half. So we're really talking about taking the derivative with respect to s of this minus the derivative with respect to s of the secant inverse of s. Let's see, the derivative of this, since that's a function raised to a power, the power comes down, we get the function to 1 power less. And um, then we get times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 2s. Now here, the derivative of the secant of s is going to be 1 over the absolute value of s times the square root of s squared minus 1. I think there's some simplification that might go on here, because we have um, these 2s could cancel. And then we would have s over the square root of s squared minus 1 minus 1 over the absolute value of s um, times the square root of s squared minus 1. Let's see. We could work on getting um, a common denominator if we multiply this top and bottom by the absolute value of s. So we would get, uh, let's see, on the top we'd have s times the absolute value of s minus 1 all over the absolute value of s times the square root of s squared minus 1. Hmm. OK. Uh, arc 
cotangent and arc tangent. So we know that the derivative of the arc cotangent is negative 1 over 1 plus the variable squared. In this case, we have this inside function 1 over x, so we'll just plug that in. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Now remember, the derivative with respect to x of 1 over x would be the derivative of x to the negative 1, which is negative x to the negative 2, or negative 1 over x squared. So we would have here times negative 1 over x squared minus now the derivative of the arctangent. We know the derivative of the arctangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Let's see what we get. A negative times a negative would be a positive. So up top we have 1. We take x squared and we multiply it to both of these. x squared times 1 would be x squared. And 1 over x squared times x squared would be 1. Oh, those two things are the same. So that must be equal to 0. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if there's a way for us to think about that. Um, let's see. Oh, there's a relationship between the cotangent and the tangent, because um, the tangent and the cotangent are reciprocals, right? So let's say y is um, the arctangent of x then that would mean that the tangent of y is equal to x, which would mean that uh, the cotangent of y, since the, t the cotangent of y is the reciprocal, the cotangent of y would be the reciprocal of this, which would be 1 over x, which would mean that um, y, let's see, the cotangent of y is 1 over x, that would mean that um, that y is equal to the cotangent of 1 over x? Well, it depends. The arctangent gives you an angle between, y is between minus pi halves and pi halves. And so um, since the cotangent of y is 1 over x, if um, the cotangent, oh, I was going to say cotangent inverse here. Um, the cotangent inverse would give you an angle between 0 and um, pi. So the cotangent inverse of 1 over x would definitely be an angle between 0 and pi. And uh, so these two um, would either be the same or they would only vary by some constant multiple. So those, those angles should be fairly the same. The issue comes up if uh, if the x is negative, then y is going to be over in this range. But anyway, the difference between the two should be um, no more than a constant. And if the difference between these two is constant, then their derivative should be 0. Okay. One more. Let's see, we want to take the derivative of this. So we need to take the derivative of the natural log. Of course, to take the derivative of natural log, you take the derivative of the inside over the inside. Now to take the derivative of this, we're going to need to use the product rule. We're going to take the derivative of uh, the first, so the derivative of x with respect to x is 1, times the second, so we'd have the arctan of x over 2, um, plus the first, the derivative of x, let's see, that would be x, times the derivative of the second. So we can turn our attention to taking the derivative of this arctan. Let's see, over here we've got 2x over x squared plus 4. And then we're going to have a minus arctan x over 2. And a minus x, the derivative of the arctan is 1 over 1 plus variable squared. In this case, the inside function is x over 2. So we're going to have x over 2 squared times the derivative of the inside. Now, the derivative of the inside is 1 half. Because the derivative of x over 2 with respect to x is 1 half. Let's see if we can put some of this together. I think some simplification is going to happen. We have 2x over x squared plus 4 minus the arctangent of x over 2. Now I have minus, I'll put this x upstairs. And if I multiply this 2 through, I get 2 plus, this is x squared over 4, since x over 2 times x over 2 would be x squared over 4 times 2. Hmm, that's pretty close, because this 2 makes that over 2. 
If I multiply top and bottom by another 2, I'd have 2x upstairs. And downstairs, I'd have, let's see, we've got our 2x, x squared plus 4. We've got our minus arctan, x over 2. And uh, then on, on the top here, we have a 2x. 2 times 2 would be 4. And 2 times x squared over 2 would be plus x squared. So we see those two terms cancel. And we're left with negative arctangent of x over 2 as the answer for that problem.